Good morning, everyone. I am Ruther J. B. Cupino, Science Research Specialist 1 of the OST AST, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for being here in this webinar series and also the OST Region 6 for the invitation. Given the chance to share with you, in behalf of our team, some of our research works under the OST AST and Computer Software Division, I hope that all of you are doing well and in good condition during this COVID-19 pandemic. Let me share with you Gulai Project, an AI and IoT-assisted phenotyping platform. To start with, the Philippines as a nation has 9.671 million hectares of total agricultural land area, out of which 4.936 million hectares is arable, with such vast land area available for cultivation and production of export quality agricultural products, the Philippines is in a good position to be a key player in the agricultural sector within the region and overseas. However, interest in jobs relating to agriculture has undergone a decline over the years. From 2010 to 2012, the share of agriculture in total employment in the country has experienced a drop to 32%. There is growing lack of interest in the youth in pursuing crop farming related jobs and the current generation of farmers are now aging. The promise of high paying office jobs in the metro strongly entices the youth to leave the countryside, leaving behind a generation of aging farmer relatives. This phenomenon can be seen as a transition of the Philippines from traditional agriculture-based economy to now an information age economy. Another factor that affects the growth of agricultural sector in the country is the climatic conditions that farmlands are exposed to whole year round. For almost half of the year, crops are exposed to extreme heat during the summer season for the other half of the year, crops are exposed to heavy rains, which are most of the time accompanied by strong winds during the rainy season. The Philippines experiences at least 20 tropical cyclones every year that causes damage to crop and infrastructure. This damage just amounts to billions of pesos both in agriculture and infrastructure. These factors, decline of interest of the youth in agriculture, and vulnerability of farmlands to damage due to local weather conditions contributes to the continuous decline of agriculture in the Philippines. This problem poses a threat to the food security of the country. Currently, there are only few initiatives from both the public and the private sector, which focus on the fusion of farming and information and communication technology or ICT. The project is smart plant production in controlled environments, or rather known as SPICE, of DOST, UP Diliman, and UP Los Baños, focused on the conservation of indigenous and endemic plants in the Philippines. Local state universities' efforts on this area are more focused on the alternative modes of growing crops, like hydrophonics and aquaphonic. Nowadays, it is uncommon for digital device to be connected to remote cloud services that provides functionalities that are otherwise not possible to perform on the device itself or would be resource extensive. Such devices are commonly referred to as edge devices, which serves as sensing devices for remote applications that utilize data in producing services. This ecosystem of devices and cloud-based remote services make up the Internet of Things or IoT. And it seems this will be the trend for the upcoming decades in ICT. Simple definition of IoT is that it allows multiple things or objects to be connected to the Internet and allow exchange of data. In this age of AI, collected data from edge devices are fed to machine learning algorithms that determine patterns among many variables 
and encapsulate these patterns into data models. These data models can be used for various analytics purposes, such as predicting values of certain variables given yet unseen observation data. The machine behaves according to the corresponding profile of new input data. There is much interest among the youth towards IoT and AI these days, probably due to the heavy proliferation of these topics on mainstream media through Hollywood sci-fi movies and online media sites such as YouTube. Access to mobile devices and the internet among the youth is also continuously growing. The youth gravitates towards what is high-tech and in turn puts aside some areas of studies associated with being low-tech like farming. So with this, the project aims to promote the fusion of farming and ICT among the youth through the implementation of an indoor microscale plant growing system. The objective of the Gulai projects are the following. First is to construct prototypes of the plant growing module, which is to develop an indoor microscale plant growing system with controlled environment. The plant growing module of the system will be fitted with basic environment sensors to gather data about the plants. An onboard computer box will perform the periodic measurements of values of the environmental parameters. Second objective is to develop an online information management system for managing data generated from the platform. The collected data from the growing box will be forwarded to the remote servers for storage and processing. Data will be generated from the plant growing module will be used to train machine learning models that can be used to predict certain aspects of plants. Example, growth rate based on specific environmental parameter values. Third is to develop a mobile application for remote monitoring of the platform status. I think every one of us has our own mobile phone or smartphone. With this mobile application, we will be able to remotely create, run, and modify experiments and also monitor and take control of the plant growing module through online, even if we are in a different location. Fourth is to conduct validation activities with partners. During our problem verification and validation stage, we have reached out to several SUCs like UPD Liman, UP Los Banos, and Nueva Ecija, University of Science and Technology, or NEUST. We have conducted series of meetings to validate our problem statement and found the significance and benefit of Gulai project development to further improve their domain and help them in conduct of their research activities. The initial target beneficiaries are research institute, SUCs, high school, and science laboratories that would want to conduct research and experiments on plants in a controlled environment. To give you a brief understanding on the Gulai system, let's take a look at the high-level architecture of the Gulai project. As we can see on the slide, Gulai system comprises of the following. Gulai backend system. This will mainly be the remote services or application program interface that is available online that will handle the exchange of data between the mobile application, experiment unit platform, or plant box and the web application. The second component would be the mobile application platform for monitoring the experiment unit platform. In here, we will be able to remotely create, run, modify experiments, and also monitor and take control of the plant growing module through online. As I've mentioned, even if we are in a different location, given the privilege to access the Gulai system. The third component would be the experiment unit platform or the plant box itself. The fourth component would be the web application. This will be a web-based application portal that is available online that will provide capability to the researchers or end users of the system to be able to manage, create, and view experiment and also perform data processing tasks and generate results. 
For the initial key players, we have identified two actors in the system, the admin and the researcher. The admin, since this will be an IoT-assisted project, multiple devices with multiple sensors will be in the system. Thus, this will require someone who will manage or take control of the resources available in a certain facility or laboratory where experiment unit platform or the plant box are deployed under an organization. The second actor would be the researcher. It can be a student, senior, college, or graduate student. Domain experts in the fields of crop science can be hobbyists or enthusiasts who wants to conduct experiments on plants. Researchers can run, modify, experiment deployed in a plant box remotely through the mobile application and manage the experiment data and result through the web application. Now let's dive deeper into a more detailed architecture of the Gulai system. As we can see in the diagram, there are four main components. The general flow of the Gulai system is that the experiment platform unit or the plant growing module will be remotely controlled via the experiment platform unit monitoring component, which comprises of mobile application or a web application. The data generated from the experiment platform unit will be sent to the backend services, which comprises of API services available online, deployed in servers, and hosted in a high-performance computing facility. So contributed data from the EPU will be permanently stored and processed in the data servers. The data can be viewed and managed and be further processed through the web application component. Let's go through the component one by one. Platform unit monitoring component. The APU platform monitoring component comprises of control and monitoring application features wherein you can register, connect, and manage your multiple EPU or plant boxes. You can create and run and manage experiments. You can also set the value of the growing parameters that is specific to the plant that will be grown inside the box. Remotely, you can also monitor the performance of an individual EPU by accessing through the application dashboard. All the data gathered will synchronously send to the Gulai backend services. Also, viewing of logs of previous and ongoing experiments is enabled through the system. Log is a core of an experiment. A log file can contain an important data of activities conducted under an experiment. This will be your primary source of documentation and result. So keeping a systematic data of experiment is a key factor to obtain an accurate experiment result. As you can see, this is the prototype of the mobile application for the Gulai system. As you can see on the first image, through the mobile application, you may be able to register or add an EPU or plant box. On the se second image, if you have multiple boxes running multiple experiments one at a time, you have the capability to manage each of the plant boxes available to you through the manage box feature of the mobile app. On the third image, you will be able to see your list of ongoing and past experiments and also preview the details of each experiment. On the image five, um, you may also take control of some actions inside the plant box, like changing the light color that is needed by the plant in your experiment. The next component would be the experiment platform unit component or the plant box. This is the plant box or the hardware component of the Gulai project. The scale of this system will be small enough that one can fit it into a normal sized backyard or indoor space in an urban setting. The plant growing module of the system will be fitted with basic environment sensors to gather data about the plants. It is an enclosed, remotely controlled environment for growing plants with specific environmental factors that needs to be set. Some of the environmental factors observed are relative humidity, temperature, lighting conditions, 
like color, intensity, photo period, and luminance. Nutrients in growing medium is also monitored. Carbon dioxide, water level, pH level, and electronic conductivity. The EPU or the plant box is manageable via the mobile application. And also, it periodically logs observation data in local and remote storage. The next component would be the backend services and web application component. Backend services are the servers specific for processing and storing the data coming from the APU or the plant boxes. While the online web application will be your portal to access the Gulai backend system and the data through the web. Few initial features of the web application components are the following. First is the experiment management and viewer. Through the data synced from the mobile application and the APU or the plant box, you may be able to create and view results of experiments conducted on the platform. The second feature would be the analytics platform. You will be able to perform exploratory data analysis and multivariate data analysis on the generated experiment data sets from the platform. So through the data generated and processed, we may be able to create a plant growth model which can help the agriculture sector in the proper or optimal way of growing plants. In developing this kind of research project, several domain and skills are needed since it is a fusion of agriculture and ICT. Citing some of those domain skills presented in the slides, for us a team for over years of expertise and the mandate of the institute, which is in microelectronic technology transfer and space technology, in proposing projects like Gulai, which involve the agriculture domain, we have partnered and validated our problem statement to the domain experts in crop science, plant breeding, and SUCs like Nueva Ecija, University of Science and Technology, or NEUST, UP Diliman, and UP Los Banos Crop Science and Plant Breeding College. For crop science and plant breeding, crop scientists and plant breeders undertake scientific research and work to increase the yield of field crops by improving farming methods and plant breeding techniques and developing new plant strains. Also to give highlight that under the K-12 system education of the Philippines, which create changes in the way high school students are trained, not only for educational advancement, but also for possible career or employment. By introducing technology like Internet of Things and ICT will help the students decide whether on what strand they will be taking. For someone who will interest with research on ICT and microelectronics, it will fall on STEM or the science technology, engineering, and mathematics strand. If the students are interested in building prototypes and robots, crunching numbers, analyzing the ways of life, and the interest in the latest software development tools and system engineering, which are the key skills in developing this kind of project, then STEM strand is fit for them. Gulai is currently in the development stage of the prototype and the software applications and is targeted to be deployed to the partners by next year. So that ends my talk. Thank you all for being here today and taking time to patiently listen to what I had to say. For questions, you may email me at my email address flash at your screen. And I wish you all a blessed day. Thank you.